Today, I want to tell you a true story about something that happened to me when I was a lot younger than I am now. You see, I grew up on a farm way out in the country in North Georgia. We didn't have any neighbors to speak of, and we certainly had nobody my age nearby. So I had nobody to play with. I had to find ways to entertain myself. So I read everything I could get my hands on. I spent hours bouncing a tennis ball off the side of the house. I spent lots of time in the woods pretending that I was a Western lawman tracking down outlaws or a mighty hunter hunting wild animals in Africa. But I never thought I was bored. I mean, I certainly was never bored enough to play with my little brother, who was six years younger than I was. But even so, I was always really happy every summer when my cousin came to visit his father, who lived with my grandparents, just a short walk or bike ride away from where I was. My cousin's name was Richard. Everybody called him Buddy, and he certainly became my best buddy. We did, he was a year older than I was, and we did everything together. And we soon found out that two little boys could have a whole lot more fun than one little boy by himself. We also found out that two little boys could get into a whole lot more trouble than one little boy by himself. Now, we did everything together. We spent a lot of our time at my grandparents' public swimming pool. We rode our bicycles everywhere. We, we tormented my brothers and sisters. We just had a great time. But the one thing we never did was we never went anywhere near that little stone house that sat in the pasture that we could see from the swimming pool. It was just a tiny little house made out of field stone, same thing that my grandfather had made his house out of. And we really wanted to know what was in it. But every time we'd headed in that direction, we'd heard strange noises coming out. And finally, we decided we didn't really care what was in it. Well, one summer day, hot summer day, when I was nine and Buddy was 10, we were lying around the swimming pool in our bathing suits and we didn't want to swim anymore. And we were trying to figure out what we could do. My brother and sister weren't around so we could pester them. So Buddy said, I know, said, let's go down to the creek and catch us some crawdads. And I said, no, no, I don't want to do that because I'd seen a snake down there just the day before. I said, let's get on our bicycles and go over to my house and play with some of my toys. And Buddy said, no, he didn't want to do that. Uh, it was too hot. And of course, we didn't have air conditioning. So we sat there for a few more minutes. And then Buddy said, I know what we can do. Today's the day we go find out what's in that little house that little stone house. And I said, uh, no, I don't think I want to do that. I was really scared. And then Buddy, but Buddy really wanted to do it. And so I want to be real clear here that from this point on, everything that happened was Buddy's fault because he wanted to go so bad that he said to me those words you never want to hear. He said, oh, come on. Don't be a scaredy cat. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. What was I going to do? I couldn't let Buddy think I was a fraidy cat. So I said, okay, let's go. And so we went across the road and climbed over the barbed wire fence that was between us and that little stone house. And we headed towards it. And the closer we got, the slower we went. But we finally got there. And we got up right up to the edge of the house. Now, the door was on the far side of the house. And we, we weren't going in that door until we knew what was in there. And so we got down on our hands and knees and we kind of crawled up to the side of that house. And we got right under the window that was in the wall facing us. And we leaned against the wall and listened and we couldn't hear a thing. And then Buddy he pointed at me and he said, well, look in the window. And I said, uh-uh you look in the window. And he said, uh-uh, you look in the window. Well, we spent about five minutes exchanging points until we finally decided that what we do was look in the window 
together. And so we started slowly raising ourselves up to get up high enough so we could see through that window. And just about, just before we got to where we could see, we heard something. We heard this sort of low growling sound. Well, Buddy and I dropped back down on the ground and we hovered against that wall, too scared to move. And as we lay there, that noise got louder and faster. It went Well, at just about the same time, Buddy and I decided we'd heard enough of that and we took off running. I didn't look to see which way Buddy was running, but I knew where I was going. I was going back to the bathhouse by the pool where I knew my grandfather was, and I knew my grandfather would take care of me. And I ran as fast as I have ever run up to that time, and I have guarantee you I have never ever run that fast again. And when I got to that barbed wire fence, I didn't have time to climb over it. I was too scared. I just dove right under it and then got up and kept right on and running. And when I got to the bathhouse, there was my grandfather, Pop. I knew he'd be there. He sat there in his rocking chair, smoking his pipe like he always was. And I came running around the side of the bathhouse, and he took one look at me, and he said, what's wrong with you, boy? What's happened? And I said, Pop, Pop, have you seen Buddy? Have you seen Buddy? And Pop said, no. The last time I saw Buddy, the two of you were together. I thought y'all were together. He said, and what's going on with you? You look like you saw a ghost. I said, oh, Pop, it is worse than any ghost. He said, I think, I, I, I think a lion. I think there's a lion after us. And he said, what? He said, there's no lions around here. Oh, I said, I said I'm sure there's a lion. I, we heard this lion of growling, and I took off running. And, and I think, and, and then I felt something on my shoulder running down my back, and I put my hand up there and pulled it back and looked, and my fingers were covered with this, this red, sticky stuff. And I said, turn back to what Pop could see. And I said, Pop, am I bleeding? And he said, well, yeah, there's some blood on your back and there's a few, a couple of long scratches down your back. I said, see, see, I told you it was a lion. And I, 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 I think I, he scratched me and I'm afraid he ate, buddy. If I hadn't, I hadn't seen him, you hadn't seen him. Pop said, wait a minute. He said, where, where were you? I said, well, we were over there at that little stone house that we'd never been to. So we heard something and we went to that little, and, and there's a line in there and it, I think it, I think it ate Buddy. Well, Pop sat there for a minute and then he started laughing. And he said, when, you nitwit, that's not a lion. He said, that little stone house is our pump house said, in that house is the pump that sits over the spring that gets us running water at the house and here at the pool. Said, and and said, you know, uh, that pump, when it starts, it starts up kind of slow and it, and it makes kind of a funny noise. Said, and to somebody your age and with your imagination, it might have sounded a lot like a lion, but it was just, it was, it was, <laughs> it was just the pump. I said, well, but, but I'm scratched, I'm bleeding. He said, well, um, he said, there's a barbed wire fence between here and there. When you got to that barbed wire fence, did you climb over it? I said, no, sir, no, sir, I dove under it. He said, well, you didn't dive low enough. And the next time you go wild animal hunting, I think you ought to wear a shirt. Well, just about that time, Buddy came around the side of the house. He looked just scared as I did. Now, and Pop carefully explained to him what had happened. Now, I did notice that he didn't call Buddy a nitwit, but he did explain to him, and Buddy was almost as embarrassed as I was. Well, I figured it was over. But then, my grandfather did the worst thing he could have possibly done. He told my grandmother when she got there. And telling my grandmother something was like putting it on the radio. She told everybody she knew about me and Buddy in that little stone house. And you know, to this very day, actually, every time I went back to my hometown, even after I was a grown man, people would look at me and they'd say, I remember you. You're the boy who almost got it up 
by a lion in the pump house.